Hello the internet, my name is Lara and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a little bit of checking up on plants that have propagating. So that is going to be what this video is about. If you are interested, please stick around. I've got a number of things propagating and um, they're all at various stages of like I have this um, angel trumpet that's propagating and it was doing really, really well. And then I kind of let it dry out and then it was super unhappy and it's slowly coming back. Um, it's slowly coming back. And so that one's just kind of a wait and see type of a deal. Um, I thought I was going to lose it completely because it just all shriveled up and the leaves got all limp. And they're still limp. It's like several days later after this happened and then I rewatered it. But they're not dead. They're not falling off. So I figure I'm just going to leave it. And that's kind of a rule of thumb I find with propagations where it's like if it's not dead, <laughs> even if it's not doing anything, just leave it alone. Even if it seems like it's been like months and months and months. Um... I had my um, my Christmas cactus that I root rotted and then I was trying to propagate it in water and I swear it sat in water for like months and months and months. And I was finally like totally fed up. I was just gonna throw it out and I pulled them out of the water and went to tr throw them in the trash can and there were little roots on, <laughs> on it. And I was like, oh, so it's not dead, leave it alone. I mean, keep watering it and stuff, but... Okay, um, I don't know where we want to start. Let's start here, because this is the closest. Okay, what do we got? Okay, so these are my Griffin Begonia props, which I found out you need to have a little... Um, oh, I can't even... These guys are so well-rooted. Well yeah, it's kind of a weird angle. You have to pull off part of the rhizome, and then have a node on it like you would do with a lot of other plants where you have to have the node. Um, Griffin begonias do not propagate from leaf cuttings. So there's probably other types of begonias that don't. Um, that's the only one I've ever run into as of yet. Um, and then I was also having some trouble, I'm having trouble with my freaking begonia etna. Some of you might have seen it in a previous video. It's just unhappy with the amount of humidity that it's getting. It's crisping up. It's not dead. But what I decided to do is I wanted to try the same thing where um, Begonia Etna can be propagated by leaves. Um, and I've successfully done it before. The problem is always the transition from um, the propagation tray to the real, the real world. Um, and actually what I wanted to try and do was the same thing as the begonia griffin, and it actually seems to be working. See, I pulled off the little part of the rhizome, and there's a little, can you even see it? There it is. You can see the little root starting to, to come out there, and it's they're putting out new leaves. So, um, this is my, this was my, I just want to see what happens, and in case I lose the mother plant, then I'll have some propagations going. This is not a bad idea. Um, if you ever think that you're losing a plant that you really like, you can always try and take a propagation of it. And sometimes the propagation will survive when the mother plant dies. What do we got in here? Uh, uh, this is my watermelon begonia propagation that's really just not doing... Oh, no, never mind. I was like, it's not doing well and there's like two leaves coming out of there. I was saying it wasn't doing well because part of the leaf here, the leaf here is rotting, see? I was like, oh no, it's dying, but it's got, no, it's got a decent root system in it and it's got little baby leaves coming out of there that are actually not a bad size, all things considered. So that's, that's super exciting. Once again, leave it alone. Okay, we're gonna pull this out of here just because this is, big and in the front and I think I need to okay so these are my outdoor plants that I am attempting to propagate all right 
and it looked like it looked like the tomatoes I know I'm gonna have to balance this we're gonna be very very careful okay so the tomatoes are all doing great I've got three or four plants in each of these I put three or four seeds in just because I wanted to make sure the cucumbers all grew really really well they are super happy um these are some flowers can you even see yeah these are some flowers that i have never grown before i bought them last year and then i kept the seeds these are the um, morning glories that have reached the top of the um the top of the tray and are pushing up against it and then getting very unhappy about the fact that they don't have anywhere to go um these are the marigolds and I used some seeds that I harvested um, from my marigolds last year with no idea whether or not that was going to work and it doesn't seem to have worked well. I did both of these trays here and you can see there's one, two, and then there's like some maybe one coming out over here and the rest of them are all empty. Um, these other two trays were actually experiments of mine. They were seeds that I picked up from like the wild. I mean like literally like nature. Um, these were some wine berries um that i kept and then um i kept the seeds and then dried them out and and tried planting them and this was some milkweed that i i harvested and then it looked like it had molded so i wasn't really sure but neither of those have come up so i'm not really holding out hope for those um but everything that were well no that's not true i guess i gathered these seeds um, but anyway, so the marigolds, I'm probably going to have to go back and, um, actually, I wonder if I have it right here. Where did I throw those seeds after I was done? Oh, they're over there. We're going to stick some of the, yeah, I have the, the package of, of marigold seeds from, from, that I grew them from last year. Still here, and there's a decent number of seeds in here. So let's just go ahead and. Stick a couple of them in here, in the ones that don't have anything. Oh yeah, these seeds feel a lot better than the ones that I was planting. It's very possible that like the plant formed, because the plant formed the seeds, but they weren't, um, or a lot of them weren't actually like um, viable. Like they hadn't gotten pollinated or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know much about the marigold seeds, but anyway, I am, you can't see it because it, it's down here and I'm, I'm not going to switch the camera because I'm not going to do a ton down here, but I am just pushing my little marigold seeds into the, the ones where there are no marigolds currently coming out of them. Um, and then hopefully these seeds are more viable because, I mean, they grew really well last year and, um, they will give me some marigolds and we will keep these because I found out somebody told me that seed shelf life is around five years which is a lot longer than I thought it was um, you know not not to say that this is all the seeds are guaranteed to come up after five years but oh and I wanted to get a taller lid for this so just so that the um, morning glories can actually grow bigger dome and then I gotta put the little guys on it you're gonna have to sit in my lap you're gonna have to okay just snap them on there right like that and then you can you can control how much humidity comes in and escapes, um, which I I think is really cool. They're very handy. Oh no, that one just snapped. I wonder if that means. I think it'll still hold it there. Uh, it's not holding it very well. I might have to tape that. That's a shame. That's okay. Ugh. Okay, that was fine. 
Okay, so now I'll put the little dome guy over top and now they've got more room to grow into, but I've still got it. Um, still got it covered so that they keep their humidity. We're actually gonna set that to the side so I can get the rest of these guys out of here. All right, what do we got in here? Ah, uh, yes. The, um, these are the other frosted jades. When I pulled the plant apart, the root systems were really bad um, on the parts that I had pulled apart. So I figured I would put them in a propagation thing. They also have mealy bugs, but not too bad. Um, but they are grow they're currently growing roots. They're not really doing much. Um, apparently they've been in there since February 13th. Some of these things that I actually marked with the, um, the dates. Oh, I'm excited about this. Okay, so this is my watermelon pepperonias. And we've still got a whole bunch of roots. I'm still not seeing any leaves, leaf growth. Um, I have never grown watermelon pepperonia before, so I don't know, um, but you can see, you know, there's a decent amount of root growth on these guys, but there's no, oh, there's a little bit of, yeah, but there's no leaf growth yet, so these have actually been in there since January 24th, so, you know, we're two months out, I mean, definitely root growth, like I said, but man, I'm, I'm really looking forward to there being leaves on these guys, so. And those were actually all um, leaves that when I bought the, the mother plant were like kind of falling off. So like I didn't even have to technically pull any leaves off. I just, all the ones that needed to come off. All the ones that needed to come off were, were good like that. Um, okay, what do we got here? Propagation tray. Ah, yes. Okay, so these are some other primulina cuttings. Leaf cuttings. Leaf -ness, That are in various stages of... The Frosted Jade definitely, like, seems to be the the easiest to propagate. Um, these summer song leaves are definitely rooted in there. I think that one's got some little, oh no, they, they've, they've got the tiniest little bit of, um, you can see little leaves coming up on there. And then there's like a random begonia in there that's just kind of chilling. It was in there from a previous propagation and I'm just letting it live its best life. Maybe it will get big enough one day to become a grown-up plant, but. I have been trying, propagating um, some Christmas cactus. Um, oddly enough, uh, some of them, got, got root rot and I have regrown the roots on there. So those ones are doing well because they were they were good. And then I, I took a few new propagation and those ones don't have, or they very barely have any roots at all. There's a little, little guy there. Um, yeah, that's, that's one where you can kind of see the root rotted roots and then the new roots are growing. Um, but anyway, they're just kind of chilling in there, waiting until they get get enough roots on them to actually do something. Um, these are my queen of the nights, which have just been sitting in here forever. I really, really need to actually get them into some, some, to, into some soil at some point. Um, just because they've just been living. I mean, I guess they're doing fine in here. Again, it's not dead, you know. Oh, forgot about this guy. He's 
look at this best light back here. So this was the top of the Griffin Begonia like when I cut it to get the different rhizomes. This was the top portion of it. And so I just, it already had some good leaves on it. Um, and as you can see, it is getting some decent roots on it. It's definitely, um, the roots are not growing as fast on here as they are in the, um, the ones in the, that I showed you first, like have really, really long roots that are all into the sphagnum moss at this point. Um, but the, this one, the roots are definitely not that. And, but the leaves are doing fine and it's growing and it's doing well. So um, I'm just gonna wait until these roots get long enough and then it's eventually gonna get potted. Uh, what other propagations do I have? Those don't count as propagations, but I feel like I should look at them and since I'm in the mood of looking at things, These are, these were propagations that have since gotten um, transplanted into grown-up pots. Um, yeah. And some of them are having a little bit of trouble with the, this is the, I'm pretty sure a propagation of my $3 begonia, which just, I don't know. I've never, I've never been able to care for that plant well. <laughs> um, I try and put it in high humidity. It does well for a while and then it just for no reason dies. Um, this is my self-named raspberry swirl. I don't know what the actual species name is, but this was a propagation of that. Um, and I have a whole bunch of red kisses that are doing really really well and I think this is another one like the Etna where it um like it it needs higher humidity um it's also a Rex begonia I had my Rex begonias all did really really well through the summer oh huh. I got a splinter huh from something I don't know okay um they did really really well through the summer and I think that was when there was the higher humidity just naturally we're actually at 45 percent humidity in here now it rained a whole lot it's not cold like I'm like um but then as soon as the humidity dropped or took any kind of a hit like leaves just started dying and luckily I had propagated this red kiss I lost the original plant um Oh, my black fancy is finally starting to show some actual leafage. This plant, this black plant fancy, when I bought it, um, they were like, it's a really slow grower. And I'm like, okay, it's a really slow grower. Um, the one that I have in my grow tent, however, since it's been in that grow tent, has been like doing really, really well. Um, so it might be one of those ones where like, um, it's a rhizomatous begonia, and so it, they don't like crisp when they're not getting enough water or, you know, whatever. Um, I think it just, they, they grow really slowly. So that one actually has been growing really fast since it's been in there. This one's doing pretty well. Um, and toss. And then I have my adorable little... I think it it came off of a um, Hoya Crimson Princess. It just didn't have any of the variegation. So I guess it's a Hoya Pubicalix because that's, I'm pretty sure that that's what the, um, that's what the species is. And then the Crimson Princess and the Crimson Queen are the variegated, their names for the variegated version. Um, all right, how are these guys doing? They still seem to be pretty damp, so I'm not super worried about that. Okay. Um, but anyway, so this has been doing really well. And it's always good to check up on it. Oh. Guess I didn't look at this yet. What are you? This looks like um, Pearl Sky Propagation. Self-named Pearl Sky Propagation. Um, it's been 
it's been sitting in here. They haven't been getting big very fast. Um, but I mean, they're there, so. Okay, I think that's all I have. Some, this is the last remnants of my, um, string of dolphins. It does not look like a string of dolphins. Um, and then I have a Dave's of Thornis that's just throwing out roots in there. Um, and I'm actually trying to propagate my goldfish plant because it was getting very long. Um, and it's, it's kind of propagating, but it's, it's being very slow at it. Um, these little guys, I mean, the, the roots are only like, and they've been in there for a while. Um, It. Oh, no, that's not true. Right. This is what I get for having stuff all over the place. My friend wanted a um, Monstera. And so I decided I would just, oh yeah, doing well. I just cut a piece off of the big plant that I have and it is currently growing a root. So definitely not big enough to give it to her yet, but it's doing well. Um, so... Um, she will have a very nice cutting. It's already got a lot of nice fenestrations in there. Yeah, this is the cutting that I'm growing for you because um, I know you're wa probably watching this video at some point. So, there you go. I got water everywhere. All right, things in the future that I want to propagate. Um... I want to break up my Calathea musica because I think it's like, I mean, that thing has been growing like crazy since I got it. Like, if there were any plant where I was going to be like, this is what it looked like when I got it, and this is what it looks like now, that would be the plant. Um... Okay, I will see if I can find, I'm going to go back and find some video of when I first got it and put it in here. And this is what the plant looks like now. Um, it's just been growing crazy. It's been doing really well. I water it sometimes with rainwater and I water it sometimes with just normal water. Um, Calathea musica are one of the easier care Calatheas. Which is why it's so annoying that they were so hard to get for a while. This plant was part of the Trending Tropicals collection. I managed to get one. Um, and, I mean, it's got some it's got some crispy, like, not happy leaves. Um, but for the most part, I mean, these leaves are, like, huge. Um, it's got a whole bunch of really huge leaves. It's doing really, really well. But like I said, I'm, I think I might want to repot it. Um... Hi, <laughs> bye. Um, it's doing really, really well. And truthfully, like I know I have one local woman um who collects calatheas and this is one of the calatheas she doesn't have. And so I figured if I, you know, pull it apart, I could probably, you know, like take one of the calathea things and, and give that to her. So this, I think I want to do some stuff propagating with, re or in, in short order, okay. Ugh. It's also in an outdoor pot, and that's why it's so heavy, because the, that's the type of pot where, like, it's supposed to withstand the elements and crap. <laughs> and crap. Um, and my sonorilla. I have to, it's, it's outgrowing my little container there. It has been, I mean, it is like the happiest plant and literally I've done like nothing to it. It just sits in the terrarium. I think I've watered it. I watered it when I first got it and I think I've watered it once since then. 
Um, but now it's getting ready to be too tall. And so I really need to go and trim that down. Um, not sure I have anything else. Part of me just, part of me doesn't want to do too much propagating. Like, again, because I have so many plants already. Um... Like, I have all those maculata whitey eyes that are technically not propagations anymore. They're in soil, they're doing great, they're growing and all that kind of stuff. But I need to find out if there's anybody who wants them because I don't need that many maculata whitey eyes. And actually, my main plant has been doing very well. I don't know why all of a sudden it's doing well. Um, I don't know because it's been in the grow tent for like months now. So it's not that. I don't know. But anyway, um, that is gonna be today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my propagations and chatting with me for a little bit. If you like this video, go ahead and like this video. If you'd like to see where these plants end up going, um, go ahead and subscribe, you can stick around. And I am going to go get other stuff done. <laughs> I came down here to film this video and then ended up spending like an hour and a half watering because like everything needed to be watered. So like I definitely spent more time down here than I was planning on this morning. Not that it's bad. It's good that I, that it's good that I got to these plants because, you know, they needed to be watered. Um, but now I'm going to go and do other adulty productive things. Okay, I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.